when I'm hungry, I am the only one who feels the pain. If um, men can do it, even women, we can even make it better. Thanks for joining us on today's edition of Bistec on Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. During the outbreak of the global pandemic coronavirus, several people lost their jobs, including our guest for today's edition on the show, Araba Quegrin, who ventured into shoemaking, now produces on a large scale after she lost her job at the peak of COVID-19. My colleague Stella Sogli Jejom has the full report. the devastating effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, some people found their blessings. On this week's edition of Bistec, we speak to a female university graduate who ventured into shoemaking after she lost her job. Before I introduce my guest, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. So you're welcome back from that break and here with me is Araba Kwegrin, CEO of Kwebaba Collections. Hello Araba. Hello. I really like what you are doing. <laughs> How is business? Um, business is fine. We are, we are coping. Alright. <laughs> so um, I can see that you have some sews, some thread and a number of things. I can mm. see some finished products as well. Yes, How please. did this whole business come up? Okay, um, okay, Araba Kwe Green completed J University College, that's um, in a McCarthy Hills. I did marketing, and afterwards, I was able to get a job, even though it was um, quite difficult getting a job. Initially, I didn't get, so I had to venture into a, a different business. I started running that for quite some time, then I realized the patronage of that business was slow so then i took my certificate to looking for a job i got a job in a chocolate company where i was actually um a supervisor um somewhere after a year we were all hit by covid so during covid mm. i was laid off okay and um, then i came home doing nothing in fact it was actually a trying moment for me and then I had someone who was doing this type. This is actually a thread. Okay. Yes. She was, um, the person was actually doing the thread, like a full slippers for me. Then I was selling on the side. Okay. Yes, please. So it was actually um, on the side for me while I was still working with my company. So when I was laid off, I was there one day, then I was like, okay, if someone has been able to do this, can't I also do something? Even though I had no um, training about it. So I had to take the finished slippers that I have. I went to the market to find its um, raw materials that mm -hmm. has been used for. Okay. So I brought it home and the funny thing, or even till now, I for one, I don't even know how I even started. Mm. I don't know. I was just turning my hands around it, and because I was very angry inside and wanted to really do something for myself, so I took the thread. I pray. Then I started working on the materials I've gotten from the um, markets. Upon let's say upon almost ten trials. Mm. 
yes upon 10 trials that was when i was able to get similar thing mm -hmm. like the um the person's own i took it to a shoemaker to actually stick on for me because then i only had this okay. yes so i took it to the shoemaker to just stick it on the slippers for me where the shoemaker advised that a hey, now if you are not doing anything and you really want to be serious with this why don't you get your machine so that was when i was the little money i got that was when i used to gather then get this uh, machine okay okay so i got the machine but even though i'd bought the machine i would still go back to the shoemaker i would design and still give it to the shoemaker to fix for me so one time I was there and I gathered the carriage. I went to the shoemaker. Okay, just teach me how I can also stick on the um I can so stick the, the, the design on. Yeah. So he then he then was able to teach me how to go about it. So one time I was there and a friend came and was like, Ah, when you do it, take a picture of it. Or you can even post and just write something. Just just do something with it. Even though I was still going for interviews, because mm. I was still looking for a job. Okay. So I wasn't I wasn't really um uh, much into it. I was just doing something. I was whiling away the time. I just wanted to keep myself busy. So I took a picture of it and I posted. Ah, on social media. Hey, can I get some? Where can I get some? Okay, so that's like how the part where it's, you started commercializing it. Yes, please. Okay, so tell us about that. Okay, so um, I then decided, okay, if people are really liking what I'm doing, I'm a woman, and there's actually a male-dominated industry. industry. So if I'm doing it, in fact, I was shying away from posting myself do on the internet because I was like, hey, Look at you, you are doing, aren't you? Like, that was what I was doing. So I was shying away from it, but I realized when I'm hungry, I am the only one who feels the pain. No one feels the pain. So I decided to put in um, the pictures and the videos I take while I'm working. I put them together and I posted it. Okay. Okay. So I posted it and I realized I, it needs to be professional. It shouldn't just be raw. Yes. So I was able to learn how to edit, how to take nice pictures. That was when I went on the internet to know all this and like editing and even the posting, even captions for the um, product. So I posted and someone also saw the video hey you a, a woman and you are doing slippers oh okay i want this i want that so that was where it, it all started. started yes so so far how has the market been like since you um, finally outdoored it okay um for now because i'm not doing anything illegal and it's a legal business i'm doing um, for now, the patronage, I would say, is cool. Okay. It's cool. Even though I don't have a showroom for myself, at least, it still puts something on the table for me. Yeah. Where do you see your business in the next few years? Are you planning on employing more people, training other people to also start and do something for themselves? Okay. I'll be much humbled um, to have a lot of women venturing into it. Mm. And I see a few women who walk up to me and like, hey, we want to learn how to do it, so can you help us? But for now, I don't have the space to accommodate people. Okay. Even though I really, it's actually a women empowerment. Unfortunately, please forgive me, I wouldn't be able to help the men. Because I want this to only be about the women. Because we the women, sometimes when we don't have anything on us, we tend to think about a lot of negative Mm -hmm. things yes so if this actually a male dominated and we women we are venturing into it i believe if um men can do it even women we can even mm -hmm. make it better oh, that's yeah. inspiring so after this break 
Kwe Baba will show us how she begins to do the slippers from scratch and then she'll show us the finished product. We'll be right back. Yeah, welcome back from that short break now since Kwe Baba said she wants to train a lot of women I'll be looking closely when she's doing it so that maybe by the end of the day I can also start so please show us how does it all begin where does it start from and how do you achieve a, a beautiful sleep okay so um you first and foremost have to get this um, the thread woven like mm. you need to weave the thread so there's actually one part of um, the slippers I do because okay. I have um, moving slippers beaded slippers I have leather slippers and just recently I invented a Okay. so there's actually my weaving design that I'm about to do I uh, first have to get my slippers the size of the slippers so i'm measuring it let's talk about the durability of this um, slippers how long can i wear it okay um if you really take good care of it you can wear it let's say for three to five years oh wow yes is it water resistant Oh, can I take it, it to the beach? You can take it to the beach, but it's more advisable um, you avoid that. But okay. let's say you are wearing it and it starts raining. It doesn't really matter. Okay. But for it to stay more longer, yes, you, you have to just avoid that intentionally um wearing it in water or something yes you just have to avoid that so are there any plans to maybe start doing Birkenstock that comes from ghana because these days we are preaching made in ghana products and now you know how imports are expensive and all so if you're able to get from ghana okay um is my is my prayer that I get everything in Ghana, but you know, it all goes back to getting money to doing all this. If I have lots of money somewhere, I don't mind inventing made in Ghana Birkenstock. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh huh. But because I lost a job, the few, um, the little savings I was able to. Say that was what I use in starting this business. Okay. So if if we have bulk money, we can definitely invent made in Ghana back in stock. Yes. So right. right now, financing is the main challenge. Hmm. That is my topmost challenge because if I'm able to get um, finance, I can definitely get more people on, on board, more hands. Then we can just do it big time. So I'm shaping it too. I'm shaping it. Okay. From here, we are now coming to stick it on the so. This Ghanaian color, I really like playing with colors. For now, I don't really wish for a white color job because whatever I'm supposed to get there, I'm really getting here even more. So I really don't see why I will go back to doing, to building someone's business where I can build my own every process you need to really pay attention to it because if you miss one process it will affect the other so um this design is actually called a henakua 
I have unique names for them. Uh, very Ghanaian names. Mm. Yes. Ahinakwa, Asantua. I have men designs. Some are actually um, named um, after, like, some are called Asibre, um Ohine. So, this, a man can also wear, but not this design. This okay. design is only for female oh, yeah. yes oh, please okay. so i have my men design unfortunately i wish i could show you some but i have men designs as well so my customers i've made them really um aware of the design name so they go by what they want okay i want a size this okay. it makes it easy to yes choose to identify it want. yes so from where you really have to let it dry this drying will take some time okay. but we are almost through okay. we are 90 percent through i need to make sure it's well fitted wow yeah that's a lot of manpower <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes this is where you really feel you're a woman. Wow. <laughs> you are a woman in a male dominated industry that she? because he yeah, really needs the muscles. <laughs> wow. So we are done? We are done. Wow. So now you have your slippers in your country colors. Wow. <laughs> This is really nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. I can't believe I've sat here for you to <laughs> start and finish a whole yeah. slippers. So this is 90 cities. This is 90 cities. And wow. yes, this is 90 cities. Thank you very much, Kwe Baba, for Welcome. having us on this week's edition of Bistec. We just spoke to our Kwe Green. She's CEO of Kwe Baba Collections. She does Birkenstock slippers, shoes for both men and women and that will be all for this week's edition of bistic with me stella g jom sudli back to you Ernestina. thank you stella g jom sudli for that report up next is biz headlines <laughs> The Ghana Statistical Service has announced that the producer price inflation for June 2022 is 38.0%. This indicates that the current rate is 4.7 percentage points higher than the rate recorded in May 2022. However, monthly producer price inflation between May 2022 and June 2022 was 4.6%. The year-on-year -year producer price inflation across the subsectors for June 2022 was as follows: manufacturing 51.8 percent, mining 25.5 percent, utilities 1.2 percent. The producer price inflation measures the average change over time in the selling prices of goods and services as received by domestic producers. Meanwhile, inflation for the month of June hits. 29.8%. TUC Secretary General Dr. Anthony Yaoba has sent out a strong message to government amid talks with the International Monetary Fund for an economic rescue program due to the economic hardships the country is facing. According to him, if the bailout program imposes other challenges on public sector workers, then he will be leading an industrial strike against the government. Addressing a press conference in Accra on Monday, July 18th, Dr. Yaoban said, The greatest challenge ahead of Ghanaians is the IMF-sponsored program. As you know, the government has started negotiating with IMF, and we know very well that the IMF programs and policies are completely devolved from reality. We have already communicated our objection to the decision to seek an IMF bailout for the 18th time. Ghana has been listed among a dozen of developing nations facing a looming debt crisis among the general economic downturn. Other countries in the list of 12 nations at risk of debt default included Ukraine, Nigeria, Kenya, Tunisia, El Salvador, Egypt, 
Ethiopia, Argentina, among others. According to a Reuters report, factors that occasioned Ghana's specific crisis rest on, among others, massive borrowing, rising inflation, and a slumping currency, soaring debt to GDP ratio. Furious borrowing has seen Ghana's debt to GDP ratio soar to almost 85%. Its currency, the CD, has lost nearly a quarter of its value this year, and it was already spending over half of the tax revenues on debt interest payments. Inflation is also going or getting closer to 30 percent, the report noted. A $750 million Afrexim bank loan has been approved by Parliament. The loan, which forms part of a $1 billion loan agreement or from government, is seeking to pay for infrastructure projects across the country, is to also help shore up foreign reserves. The minority in parliament had earlier kicked against the loan, whilst noting that some projects captured under the loan agreement were duplicated. However, whilst parliament was providing the details, the minority redrew its opposition. Speaking on the floor of Parliament, ranking member of the Finance Committee, Atto Forsen, said the move is to shore up the country's international reserves. Ranking member on the Roads and Transport Committee, Kwame Agboja, however, told journalists that the minority was not necessarily opposed to the deal. However, it, wa it warns the finance minister to come clean on the components of the facility. The state has lost an amount of 27 billion cities to tax exemptions between 2008 to 2020, Finance Minister Ken Oporiata has disclosed. Disclosing this in Parliament on Friday, July 15th, Ken Oforiata added that through these years, the country's revenue dipped to about 1.8 billion cities in only 2020. He said to avert some of these challenges, it is prudent for the state to protect the public purse to keep the economy on a sound footing. The finance minister, however, said Ghana is likely to make some savings of 460 million cities on tax exemptions this year. The tax exemptions bill 2020 was considered under a certificate of urgency by the finance committee. <music>